Hey, I'm Nancy Cavey, National ERISA and Individual Disability Attorney. Welcome to Winning Isn't Easy. Before we get started, the Florida Bar tells me that I have to give you a legal disclaimer. So here it is. This podcast is not legal advice. Nothing, however, is going to prevent me from giving you an easy to understand overview of the disability insurance world, the games that carriers play, and what you need to know to get the disability benefits you deserve. So off we go. Are you an attorney with a long-term disability policy? Well, if so, you're in luck because this episode is for you. I'm going to be talking about three things that every attorney needs to know and didn't learn in law school about a disability insurance claim. Number one, what every attorney needs to know about long-term disability insurance and the three ways to buy a disability insurance plan or policy. Two, how to make time to look at your disability insurance policy before it's too late, and the seven most important terms in every disability insurance policy or plan. Let's take a break before we get started. Welcome back to Winning Isn't Easy. Making time now to look at your disability insurance policy before it's too late is a wise thing for an attorney to do. Look, COVID-19 was a horrific reminder how the world can be turned upside down in a matter of weeks. And for many of us, the world is still a bit upside down. Some of my clients learned a horrific lesson about their disability insurance and their business interruption insurance. Not only do they have long-term complications of COVID, but their ability to work, to practice their occupation has been impacted. Some are only working part-time, others have had to sell their practices, others have had to stop working altogether, and they're finding out way too late that they can't make it financially. Lessons learned too late and taking a proactive approach to reviewing your disability policy is key. I bet you haven't looked at your disability policy or plan since you bought them, And you sure don't know what your coverage was that you purchased. And you don't know what your benefits are. You don't know what you have to prove. You don't know how they coordinate. You don't know a whole lot other than the fact that you've got a disability policy or plan. It's way past time for a policy review. So while you're waiting for your next Zoom event, get that disability policy or plan out. And the first thing you should look for is terms, terms in the policy. So let me give you a laundry list. Number one, how much is your monthly policy benefit? Two, is there a reduction or offset for the receipt of social security disability benefits, pensions, workers' comp settlements, personal injury settlements, practice buyouts, equipment buyouts? Three, is there a reduction for any other disability insurance benefits? Do you happen to know that some disability policies will reduce your benefits by what you get from another disability policy? Four, how long do you have to be out of work? which is known as elimination period, before you can collect your benefits. And more importantly, can you maintain your lifestyle on this amount of income? So now that you know what your net monthly benefits are, the second question is, what was the occupation you insured? Disability policies do not insure a job. The policy ensures your ability to do the material and substantial duties of your occupation, as that term is defined by your policy. So what should you consider? What's the policy definition of disability? What's the policy definition of occupation? If you're an attorney who has a specialty, is your disability benefits based on your board certified area of practice? And has your specialty changed? Is there a dual occupation provision in the policy and how is that defined? And do you have a dual occupation? You might be uh, an attorney, but you also may be an entrepreneur that owns apartment buildings. The third consideration is what kind of benefits you're eligible to be paid. Now, you can have a policy that would pay total disability benefits if you're unable to work. You may have a policy that pays residual disability benefits if you can work but have a certain amount of uh, lost wages. But there are some policies that say you have to be totally disabled before you can file a residual disability claim. So you don't want to stop work uh, and find out that um, You may not be eligible for the kinds of benefits that you think you're uh, entitled to, or you may be trying to work part time and uh, submit a disability claim only to learn that you have to be totally disabled 
before you can file a residual disability claim. Now, the other thing I know sounds strange is understanding that occupation because many disability policies will defer, define the term occupation differently. Many of them will say that the occupation is to be defined or interpreted uh, by how your occupation is performed based on the Dictionary of Occupational Titles. Go get out the Dictionary of Occupational Titles. Type in the word attorney. And they may have 10 different types of attorneys, but if you look at the description, this description hasn't been updated in about 30 years. And how we do what we do is not necessarily consistent with the Dictionary of Occupational Titles. So you need to understand that. The fourth major consideration is how long you're eligible for benefits. Now, most policies will pay benefits until the retirement age, but there are some policies that say, look, if you've got a mental nervous condition or your medical condition is based on subjective conditions like migraines, post-concussive syndrome, cognitive issues, fibromyalgia, your benefits are just limited to two years. And it doesn't matter how disabled you are after two years, you're done. You need to know the answer to those questions now so that you can make changes in your disability coverage now, not tomorrow, next month, next year. Now, I know I'm as guilty as you are of putting off things that are important to my family and to our finances. But I've had a kick in my pants because my dad became disabled while I was growing up. And I know firsthand what it's like to be in a situation where the breadwinner has lost their ability to work. In fact, statistics show that 25% of Americans will become disabled at some time during the course of their lifetime. COVID-19 is a wake-up call. It's shown us how fragile life is and how fragile our incomes are, regardless of how healthy we are, how much we exercise, or how well we eat. So take the time to be proactive. Take a proactive approach to your disability insurance planning. Give yourself and your family true financial peace of mind and knowledge that you can maintain your lifestyle that you and your family deserve if you become disabled. Let's take a break.